Hi everyone, this is Alyssa Robbins from SADA, and we're thrilled to welcome you to today's live stream webinar where you will once again meet the experts. Today we're focusing on Google Sheets, learning to create, edit, and collaborate. At SADA, we designed these weekly sessions to offer up our deep expertise to you as we all work together in our work from home environments, because there's always something we can learn using our collaboration tools in our daily work. This series, called Sweet Bits, showcases our incredible SADA experts and provides some much-needed how-tos around the capabilities of the G Suite portfolio. I learn something new every single week, and we hope these will empower you in your work-at-home life. You can submit questions to today's presenter at any point by clicking the link in the description below and typing your questions. We'll get to your questions at the end of the presentation. These sessions will be available following the live stream on our remote workforce hub that we call Cloud Quarters. It's a new section of our website complete with a growing collection of productivity and collaboration resources all for you. Heather will talk about it more at the end of her session. I'd now like to introduce our expert for today's session, Heather Summers, Digital Transformation Manager at SADA. Let's get learning, Heather. Thank you so much, Alyssa. I appreciate the warm introduction. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with everyone and we can go ahead and get started. So today we're going to be doing Google Sheets. This is one of my personal favorite topics. So I'm looking forward to everyone being a part of this great training session. If you haven't met me before, my name is Heather Summers. I've been doing G Suite consulting for the last seven years. And prior to that, I was a Microsoft Office trainer. So if you have any questions about the interoperability between Excel and Sheets, I'm happy to answer those. We're going to go ahead and talk about how to work with Google Sheets. Um, I went ahead and put in an Excel sheet just to show you how we can go ahead and make that into a Google Sheet and work with Excel. And I'm going to show you how to filter Google Sheets, how to do a pivot table, and then our Explorer function. I'm going to go ahead and jump right into the demo, which I have set up here. Oop, wrong one. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and go into our Gmail. And this is where I always like to start my trainings. And then over here on the right hand side, next to your company logo, you'll feel, see the apps launcher. If you click on the apps launcher, this takes you to all of our different applications that you can find inside the suite. And we're going to go to the Google Drive, which is our storage option. But we do have a Google Sheets application option right here. So you can go directly into Sheets if you wanted to. But we're going to go into the drive. And here inside the drive, as I told you, I have an Excel file. And I can go ahead and open up Excel right inside of our product. Now, here you're going to see what's called the um, preview mode. So it puts a black bar around everything. And then in the center, it says open with. Now, this is a little bit of a misnomer. It says open with Google Sheets, but we're actually going to use what's called the Drive Office Editor. And what that means is, is that this is going to leave this as Excel. Now, my interface is going to look like Sheets. I'm going to interact with it like it's Sheets, but it is going to keep that XLS X um, suffix, prefix uh, at the end. And here inside of my drive, you see it's going to stay as XLSX. So here, if I go into the sheet, you can see that I've already set up a sheet that's pretty much got everything on it. Now, the nice thing about this Office editing, it has all the same functionality as my Google Sheets, but it keeps it as Excel. So I can still do pivot tables. I can still do um, filters, all the things that I'm going to show you while still leaving it as Excel. If I did want to change it to a Google sheet, sheet, I can go to File, and this is the only time you'll see the word Save in our product is here when we're using this Office Editor option. Now, I can still share this with others. So I have shared this with my SADA account, you can see here. And I can share it with others, like Nikki, my colleague. And you can still share with other people. And you can still set the sharing permission so I can make them an editor, a commenter, or a viewer. So I'm going to go ahead and send that to them so that they can be in the document with me if they want. 
Now I've gone ahead and set up here a um, file that I have imported. You can import Excel and CSV files by going to File and Import. So I can import both of those through here. Now what I want to do this in this particular situation is I want to get rid of my duplicates. So you can see Becky Belor is a duplicate. I have Justin Timbrooks is a duplicate. Olivia and there's a Ryan in here. So to get rid of my duplicates, I'm just going to highlight columns A and column B. And I'm going to go to data. And right here under the data file menu is the remove duplicates. So I'll go ahead and click on that. I'm going to tell it I have a header row here. And I'm going to remove those duplicates. And you can see they found four, the four I told you about, and they removed those. Now I've gone ahead on this data tab here at the bottom and set up a VLOOKUP. So we support all the same functions that you have in Excel. And you can see this is an Excel worksheet that I went ahead and created inside, uh, uploaded into my drive. We also support array formulas. So if I had an array formula in here, that would be supported too. So you can do all of the things the functionality that you had before if you wanted to. So now I'm going to go ahead and recreate how I froze this first row and this first column. So if you go to view and freeze, you can remove those freezes by saying no and no. And now I want to freeze that first row. So I can go back to view and freeze row one. And then I can freeze that first column by going to view and freeze the first column. Now, typically, I don't just freeze one column. I might freeze multiple columns. So if I go to the C column, for instance, I can go back to view and freeze. And it shows me I can freeze up to column C now. So all you have to do is click on the last column that you want to freeze. And then you'll get that option. If you're not clicked on any option, you'll just say up to current row one, and that's all, the only option you'll have. But I'm just going to do my first column here. Now I want to show you how to copy any formatting changes. So if I went to this cell and I made it italic, and let's make it a pretty color here, and ooh, not, not that color, we're going to make it yellow. And so now I can copy this using what's called the paint formatter. It looks like a paint roller and you just click on it and then I could click on the entire row or on that single cell B1. I'm going to do the whole row so you can see all of my columns change. I can also do what's called conditional formatting. So here in column K, I want to see what numbers have been high for um, my cost. So here I can click on column K. I can go to format and conditional formatting. Here in the conditional formatting, it's going to give me this beautiful sidebar. And by default, it says if the cell is not empty, turn it green, which I always think is silly. So I'm going to come here and go to greater than, and I went 2000. And now I'll go down to the bottom and click done. And you can see it already did it for me as I was going. Now, if you want to get fancy with this, we do have a color scale here. And you can do different colors on this color scale where you could do a min, a mid, and a max if you wanted to. I am not a super fan of the color scale. I don't use it very often. So that is how you can find those high numbers. But let's say you didn't want anyone to change the cost. Um, you want to show that, oh, I didn't spend that much, right? So we're going to go ahead and protect that column. So how I can do that is a couple different ways. I can go down to the tab down here at the bottom on the left where it says data, and I can go to protect sheet here. I can also go to... Um, data and protect sheet. Now I've gone ahead and 
done this in my Excel version, but to protect the sheet, I need to make it into a Google Sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and do the file and save as Sheets, and I'll show you we'll have the same functionality we had in our Excel version we'll have now in our Google Sheet. So we see no changes have occurred whatsoever. And again, if I want to share this with people, it has made another copy. So I can go ahead and share it with my SADA account and still have all the collaboration and everything else. Now I can go to Tools and protect the sheet. And what I love about this is notice there's no password. So I want to make sure that I protect just column K. So I'm going to go to Tools and Protect Sheet. And we're going to say we want to protect that range. I'll set those permissions. Just me and my SADA account will be able to make changes. And then you see the little check boxes here, restrict editing, click done. And now those saved changes have been saved. And my SADA account cannot change anything inside of that column. So I can edit, but I can't change that column. So I'm going to go ahead and um, protect the sheet or I could protect an individual cell if I wanted to by going to the tab like we saw before and this is the other method so I can do the entire sheet except for those cells or I can protect an entire range. The other exciting thing here is if someone perhaps did change the cell I can right click and go into the edit history and see who changed it. So that's another exciting thing about that. Now I want to see I'm in HR I want to see how much money did I spend in HR? Now I could do this a couple different ways. I, I've done it over here using a function of some if, but I want to go ahead and do it using what's called the filter. So if I come up here to the top to K1, I can go to my filter button right here and I want to go and do it by HR. So we're going to go over here. And I got a question yesterday from one of my colleagues of how to sort. This is another way that you could sort is right through here, A to Z and Z to A. It will factor in that first row is your header row. But I'm going to go ahead and sort, just take out everything but HR and click OK. So this gives me my numbers right here. And you can see my numbers. I can then highlight those numbers like so. And notice down here at the bottom, I have a quick sum showing how much I spent, which is 49000 If you go and check my subtotal one, you can see my sum if I spent 49000 Now, if you don't know what function you want to use for some reason, if you come over here to the Explorer, you can see there is that same 49000 and I can actually take this and drag it onto my spreadsheet. Now it's going to show my total number when I drag it onto the spreadsheet, but any function that you want to use here, you can drag onto the sheet. Now what I want to do too is I want to see what are, what's anything over 2,000. If I click on this little down arrow, I can go ahead and filter by color here and go and find that color of anything over 2,000. So that gives me that information also. Now, I told you I shared this with my other account, my SADA account. And the only problem with this is that my, all my SADA account is going to see um, what I filtered for. So I'm going to show you my SADA account right here. And this is my SADA account sees the exact same thing as my Charlie account. So come over here, you can see it's filtered and everything. If I do what's called a filter view, so I'm gonna take off this filter, and this is really a unique situation inside of Google Sheets, is that if I filter something, you're seeing everything in real time that I'm doing. So normally it's not a problem in Excel, I'm not sharing something, you're not actively in it with me, but now this is a situation we didn't have before. So how do I deal with it? If you come over here to my filter and click on the down arrow, you're going to see what's called a filter view. Now, I've already made one called HR, so you can see it, and I can then access it anytime. But let's say I wanted to do a different filter view. So I'm going to create a new filter view. And instead of filtering for HR, I'm going to filter for IT. So I'll click over here. 
I'm going to clear this filter, go to IT, and this will be my IT filter. Now, I'm going to show you again my beautiful SADA account. And you can see on this view in my SADA account, and I'll show you my little SADA name over here. See, you can see that I don't see that filter either one. But if I did want to access them, I can. Here on my little filter, I can go to either of those views. And also under data, I can go to either of those filters. And the other cool, exciting thing about this that I'm probably a geek about it, but right here at the top, see that FVID? This is a URL, we're on the web. I can give anybody that link and they can go directly to that filter view. So kind of exciting there of options that you have. Um, I'm gonna go also and show you a little bit about how you can do a pivot table. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off these different views and I'm just gonna click up here at the top on A1. If I go to data, you see that there's a pivot table option. I'll just go to pivot table. I'm going to create this in a new sheet. And here where it says row, I'm going to add my departments. For columns, I'm going to add items. And then for values is cost. Now, again, if I wanted to see just my HR stuff, I could go ahead and filter this Oops, by department. So not last name, but department. Now, I actually have my totals in here, and I don't want that in here. So here on the right-hand side, you're going to see my pivot table editor, and here is the range that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and take out the 101 and put 100. That's just going to make my pivot table look a little better. Now, the other thing that I can do is here inside my pivot table, I'm going to go ahead and um, chart this. So I'm going to highlight a2 through A7. I'm going to press down my control key or command key if you're on a Mac, and I'm going to click on E2 through E7. And now I can go to insert and chart. And that's going to create a little chart for me here. And when I click in the chart, I can then edit it if I want by coming over here to edit chart. Now, I have to show you the coolest thing ever since sliced bread is really over here. And this is uh, what's called our explore button. So inside of Google Sheets, we, uh, along with all the other Google products, is we use artificial intelligence. And if you come over here into the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see what's called the Explore button. And this Explore button gives you all kinds of options. So if I wanted to do alternating colors, I could. There's some pre-built-in charts based on my data that it's come up with that I can drag onto my spreadsheet at any point. So I could drag one of these over here. Now, what I want to do is find out what's my highest cost inside of HR. So highest HR cost, right? That's what I want to know. And I ask this in what's called natural language. And what it does is it takes that phrase and says, oh, you want the top cost for the Department of HR. That's $3,200. And then here you can go and see the formula. And I just thought this was amazing because I do a lot of data analysis. And I was like, wow, how did they come up with that? So if you come over here, you can drag it right onto your spreadsheet. And then if that number were to change, let's say I come to any of these cells and I say 3,200 or not 3,200, I'm sorry, 3,500. And oh, I gotta make sure it's an HR cost. So let me go, I think this first one is HR. Let me double check. Yeah, that first one is HR. So if I come over here and say 3,500, it changes that number. So it's dynamic too. So I don't know, I thought that was really quite amazing. And one of the cooler things uh, about the Explore button. The other thing that's really neat is our interoperability with Excel. So I showed you here how I took an Excel sheet. I can also go to file and download Microsoft Excel, and I can email this as an attachment as Microsoft Excel. And this is available in all of our different products. Now, I hope you'll come to our class on 521 where I'll talk tons about functions. Um, if you can't, feel my enthusiasm about this product, you don't know me, but under help, you can see our function list. And I like to tell people that we actually have more functions than you have inside of Excel. Because if you go to the narrow by, these are all our categories, and go to Google, 
we have Google functions. So one of them is Google Translate, and it will take your cell and translate it into over 150 different languages. So if you put EN for English and KO for Korean, it will translate into Korean. So hopefully you'll like that. And then under help, you can see we have keyboard shortcuts. Now I, I referenced a little bit about array formulas and we'll talk about that more in depth in our functions class. But I wanted to tell you about this right here. This toggle button is for my Super Excel users or power users. This toggle will allow you to use Control Shift F4, which is the array function one, um, inside of Sheets. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Um, unfortunately, it's just one of the few that doesn't. But here, if you press, do this little toggle, all of them will work. So I want to go ahead and transfer back to my presentation, and we can want to answer some questions. And uh, hopefully, you enjoyed that, and you got some information that you were looking for. And I, um, there it is. So, welcome your questions. Okay, I believe I recently protected a column, but then when I inserted a column somewhere before it, and then my protected column changed, is there a best practice to avoid this? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, it does it, it's column specific. So if I, for instance, protect that column K that you saw, oop, not run that one. Let me go back to my Charlie one. Nope, that's not it either. Uh, then you can go ahead and it moves. So if you are going to protect a column, you might want to wait until the end of what you're doing to protect it. I don't know where my drive went. Okay, there it is. Sorry. Um, so here I went ahead and protected that column K. So if I go to data and, or sorry, tools and protect here, it always opens up with this. So people get confused and even I get confused is how do I go back to that column that I protected? All you have to do is click on this little X or, and it will take you back into that protected column. Did I take that? Oh, no, I'm sorry, cancel, that's it. So here's my protected column, which is K. And you were saying you added a column to the left. It still keeps that column protected. So um, it's just, does it's not based on the column letter right? So it moved to L instead of staying on K. So what I would recommend is maybe protecting the column at the end after you've finished everything that you're looking to do and then put your production in. Can I freeze or pin a sheet? Uh, yeah. So you can go ahead and take this sheet and you can star it right here. And then inside your drive, you can um, go to the starred view, but you can also do what's called bookmarking it, which is right here. You can click on this little star and that will bookmark it up here. And then the, another option you have is what's called priority workspace. And you can create a priority workspace and add it into there. Um, so if you come in here, you can go ahead and add it into here to um, keep working with it. So I can add that file into my priority workspace. Now, if you wanted to um, freeze it, that's an interesting question. You can go to share and you could go ahead and make that other person just have view only. Um, maybe that's what they're saying when you say freeze. Um, and that would uh, keep other people from changing it. How can I protect some cells for one person but allow them for others? Great question. So here I can go and share, and I'm going to share this with Corbett again and Mickey. And I'm going to make them editors here and send it. And now I want this particular cell just to be available to certain people. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Tools and Protect Sheet. And I'm going to say, accept certain cells, which is that L2 right there. And I'll set the permissions. And so Corbett is not allowed to change anything. Um, but Nikki and myself and my SADA account are. And I'll go ahead and click done. And so now he cannot change that particular cell. So you have um, 
what's called graduated sharing, where you can share and change different things. The other thing I could have done to him if I didn't want him to change anything is I could have made him a viewer or a commenter and I can even expire his viewership after 30, 90, 60 days if I wanted to. Only seven and 30 are in here, but I could go ahead and um, extend that to a custom date. And then I can even disable his ability to download, print, and copy. I promise I'm not picking on Corbett. We, we share an office together. So, um, but yes, I can keep him from doing all kinds of things inside the sheet. Can you show how to op how to do operations by row instead of by column? Sum the row, sum the column. Oh, okay, sure. Um, let me go ahead and take out this particular column. So here, if you go down to the bottom, I, I put a sum in here. And um, I can go ahead and click on the sum key right here and go to sum. Um, and then I can highlight the row or column that I want to do. But the other thing that I can do is the artificial intelligence I told you about. So let me escape for a second out of there. And if I come here and I type in equals sum, notice the artificial intelligence already anticipates what I want to do. So it's like, oh, do you want to sum this particular column? Um, and then I can say, yes, I, I do want to sum that column. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any numbers by row, but it's kind of the same idea. Um, I put in some phone numbers here and I had done a, an array formula like I told you with an H lookup in here and we'll do this into our functions class. But if I wanna copy a particular formula down like my B lookup or something, if I come over here and just delete these for a second, oops, sorry, let's go back to the bottom and I'll delete these. If you go up to the top, and you can do this in Excel too, is if you go into A2 and go to the bottom right-hand corner and get the black cross, I can double-click and that will fill down that function. This is my last question. Will there be formatting issues, i.e. charts, formulas, when an Excel is saved as a Google Sheet? So, um, Excel is saved as a Google Sheet. I did find, and I'll be honest with you, is with a very multi-layered chart or, or a complex chart, sometimes that doesn't come over. I had um, been doing a, a sales exercise with our sales team and I was comparing uh, three different salespeople and the chart came over, but there was three people in the chart instead of just two data points. And I did have a little bit of functionality difference with that. Um, otherwise, all the formulas come over just fine. The Ray formula I told you about does can have some issues because we do a different, um, we have a different backbone. So inside of Excel, we use VBA and, and obviously with Google being a web-based product, we use JavaScript. And you can see my, my Ray formula is written a little different. Inside of Excel, it has the brackets, and here I don't have the brackets. So it, you can see the formula just fine inside the Google Sheet, but here when I look at it through our editor, um, you can see here that it's changed it to our language. Um, it doesn't have the brackets. So um, when I download it into Excel, it does take the brackets right back, and it's just fine. Um, and then what else have I seen? A little shifting. The, I like to call it shifting in flight. Unfortunately, it's not a complete and total 100% sometimes, especially with graphical elements. But all the numbers and formulas come over just fine. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my presentation, which hopefully is this one. Ah, look, it worked that time. So we're going to go to and talk about our Cloud Quarters class. Our next class is on April 3rd. 30th, which is Google Calendar and how to optimizing your work from home schedule. Uh, all of these recordings plus um, any new recordings are now on this cloud quarters and then we have articles. And if you don't want to just listen to me, which why would you want to do that? Uh, there's other videos and plus Tony, our owner, um, has done great interviews with Google people and other internal folks. Even I have an interview on there. So definitely check it out. It's a great place to start. Um, the other thing I want to tell you about, if we haven't told you already, is about the Google Meet offer that they're offering. So they're offering Google Meet, Chat, and Drive until September 30th 
for free for any of our G Suite um, customers plus education, government, and so forth. So we are happy to help you get that up and running. And um, something I wanted to tell you that's kind of exciting that they have done with Meet is they've added, uh, just as of yesterday, they've added the tiled layout view for up to 16 people. You can do higher quality video content which is, and audio. And then we have an I. AI, artificial intelligence, low light mode, and artificial intelligence controlled noise cancellation. Uh, before this presentation, my dog was barking like crazy because my kids had ordered some food and it would have um, knocked that out for you. But I was terrified. I didn't want that to happen. So I want to thank everybody so much for um, these great opportunities to train you guys on subjects that I love and really feel close to my heart. And um, you will get a follow-up email and a survey. So feel free to f uh, fill out the survey. Tell us any additional questions that you might have or suggestions for future live streams that you're interested in. And on behalf of myself and the entire SADA family, I want to really thank you for joining us today and have a great rest of your day.